Which was e. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> We just lift up the uh, needs of each uh, person here this evening, uh, those spoken and unspoken, that you might uh, move on those behalf and, and your will be done in those uh, situations and deliverance provided for those that are in need of that. Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, I just want to thank you for this day, Father, for this. Um, uh, thank you for the, sh uh, sh uh, the Shab Shabbat here today. Father, we ask that you keep us with you, Father. Help, help us to endure it in righteousness for your name's sake. Open our eyes to see, ears to hear today, so that we may hear you, so that we may, we may be in touch with you and understand what you want for us, Father. We know that you love us. And we know that you want the best for us. So we ask that you help us and keep us away from all this perversion that's going on in this world right now. And we also ask that if there is any enemies that is attacking any of us, Father, we ask you send the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us through, Father, for under your wings we find refuge in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Father, we come to you tonight, and I want to thank you so much for your, your mercy and your faithfulness, um, for your faithfulness to, to watch over and protect us, and how you, how you showed up and showed, you showed off for my family recently, and Lord, I, I, right now I ask that you would continue to keep your hand on Sterling, and Watch over him, and Lord, you saved him for a reason. Um, and I ask that you would uh, work in his heart, work in his life, um, work up that soil, and get it ready for your your word. That you would send someone to him if you want me to speak to him, Lord. That you would just bring somebody into his life to speak your truth. That he would be tender to that. And anybody, if you have, if your spirits, if the spirit's moving, you just pray what's on your heart. Don't be a verist. Don't be a verist. Yahweh, Father, I just come to you tonight with my family, and I thank you so very much for your shabbats and for your mercies, Father God. Please have mercy on us and your wrath, and please forgive us, Father, when if you're calling us to something and we don't understand it or just help us, Father, to hear your voice, to know your voice over the over the noise, over the enemy's voice. Father, please grant us wisdom and discernment to adore you, to know your ways and to walk in them. And please don't give up on us. Please, please don't stop molding us into the image of your son. And I just ask for a new heart for Josh, for myself, um, for Brittany, and please save our children. I ask for all the fellowship, Father, here on the Zoom tonight and all around the world, Father God of Israel, who are coming together in fellowship and or even alone, who are honoring your Sabbath, Father, I pray that you would please just save our loved ones father please remember your mercy and remember your covenant with Abraham Yitzchak and Yaakov and just just save your people please bless Israel that her warfare has ended that she has received double for all of her sins and please bring us back father please bless us to come back home to you and please bring your face back father I'm so very sorry for all the times that we break your heart every time that we are just foolish and stupid and unwise and just every bit of selfishness and pride i just ask father please cleanse us of it and i thank you and i love you messiah yeshua's holy name yeah praise be your name father father please uh we're praying against the demons of homosexuality of my children um 
please. I don't know. Just please save my babies. And we come together in the authority of Yeshua HaMashiach, and we command that demon off of those children and out of that house right now. We command, Lord, those demons off, and it's going to take Matt and Angela standing up and pulling those children out of school and getting them out of the system. We pray for great deliverance right now. The mighty name of Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Get away from that family. They are Yahweh's. Yahweh, please swoop in right now and do a mighty work in that family that's never been seen before in that family and let them not have any doubt. Those children have no doubt that you are God. Set them free from that demon. We pray it in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 I felt that, Angela. I knew to step in right there and pray, sweetie. We're not going to let your family go. I pray all the time. And Yahweh, we stand in the gap right now and we pray, Lord God, for the mercy of your children of Israel. Father God, so many are defiling and desecrating your day. They are breaking and crushing your heart. They are turning their back on the holiness and righteousness of you. They are profaning the forgiveness you have given them. They are profaning your name amongst the nations and right in Israel itself. And Yahweh, we stand in the gap. We understand there is wickedness going on with your people, but remember your covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father God, you are not a God that could ever change. You are not a God that could ever lie. You are not a God that saved us based on what we did. You are a God who saved us because of your word and your promise. Lord, I know it crushes your heart and we apologize and we are so sorry for you because you deserve so much better. But Father, this night, this moment, would you call to your children? Would you open their eyes in an act of mercy and grace and do whatever it takes to save them? May they get out of the system. May they get out of Babylon. May the demons flee them this night. Father, may they feel conviction like they've never felt before. May they hear your voice. And Father, thank you for pursuing. Thank you for never giving up. Yahweh, remember your covenant. Remember your covenant and for your name's sake, save your children, because how will the God, how will the nations know that you are God and that your truth is eternal? Roar mightily, roar mightily, Lion of Judah, and save your people, save Yahweh's servants. We ask, Father, that you would put down the enemy and that your will be done in this earth. And we know, we know what's coming first. The birth pains are starting and we know the tribulation is at the door. Please give us strength to endure. May we never give in to thoughts of depression, despair, or downtrodden. May we stand so firm on your word and your love that we do not give in to the doubts. Do not let Satan divide. Do not let Satan come in and condemn, con divide, devour. Lord, we rise up like David and we say, who are you to defy the armies of the living God? And we say that to every enemy of yours, Father God. We, for your name's sake, stand in the gap and we beg you to move mightily. Save us, save your people. May we never be moved. May we not have negative thoughts or doubts or insecurities towards each other. May we not be divided. Satan is constantly trying to divide. May we stand as one in you, firm, holding up your name, holding up your Torah, exalting your glory, not our own. May we never seek anything but your truth and your will and your name to be honored and glorified. Yahweh, this night, please come and teach us. Please save us. Please deliver us. Please provide healing for those who need it. Rise up your body. May there be no lukewarmness in any of us, not even in the last little hair on our eyelid. Never. Let us bow down or be cowards. May we only bow and submit to you and your truth. May we humble ourselves before you and may we zealously be yours. Yahweh Elohim roar, save your children, save your children, save Israel. Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. 
wow, the power of the spirit tonight is intense. There's something, and I knew when I saw that fly in the milk, something's going down tonight. Some something is going down tonight. Somebody has been struggling or there's wrong. I was those of you who don't know right there, as I was praying, I would have spoken in tongues if I was alone. It was the spirit was there. I wanted to speak, but you don't, you have control over it. And that's why I want to teach you guys. You have control over it. That's what the Bible says. You have control, but the spirit right here is so heavy on me right now that I don't, I can't not feel right now. I mean, I'm tingling from, I mean, as soon as we started praying, I lifted my hands and I felt God's hands come on mine. And they're alive. I know something is here tonight. And so is there anybody who needs prayer? Anybody needs something? There's there's something here tonight. And I know it. Um, um, I had a dream yesterday, I think. And when you said that, I mean, this may be what you may be feeling. I, I saw a snake. And it was slithering away. From my room and but it went and in, into this hole and you cut out a little bit Sean. can you hear me I, I i said that i i had a dream about it's cutting snake. out it's... Mm, the enemy okay um, it was yeah it was cutting out so you had a dream about a snake and it was in your room i think it was my room and it was a slithering away but it went into this um okay. this little hole and i saw and then I don't know if it's the same dream, but then I saw a lot of people falling from the sky. Um, and then there was some kind of meteor or some kind of fireball that came down and it's hitting everybody. And I was running away from that fireball. And um, but but it I don't know if it hit me, but I ran away and I don't quite remember. I, I put I put it in a note, but but the one that I, I really remember. And when you said that something is here, you know, it, it reminded me of that what I had yesterday was that little snake. It was a green snake that was slithering away. And it went into this, you know how the ceiling has that, that little plate, the ceiling plate? It went through that ceiling plate and through a hole, but it went into like some kind of airplane or something like that. So I don't know uh, if it's the snake was trying to hide, you know, Hasatan was trying to hide somewhere or it's going away from me. I don't know what it is. So um, please pray. Absolutely. That's not the thing about tonight, but definitely that's something to pray for. I know there's something different. He's telling me there's something different, even if it's just going to be when we start reading uh, Mickey. Um, I just want to praise Yahweh for something that happened this week. So I got a call from my mom today and um, over the weekend, my cousin was swimming and he's 24 years old. It should nothing should have been happening, but he, for some reason, he went under the water and he didn't come up. And they, I didn't know how long he had been under, but I knew that they they did take him to the hospital. They had him whatever. And um, on Sunday or it was Monday morning, I just felt like I needed to really. I was praying for him, and I was like, I don't know if I need to go to Fargo to go see him or what, but Lord, whatever it is, he's in your hands. And um, please, if it is your will, bring him around and because they thought he was not going to make it. Well, my, mom, my mom called today and said that miraculously they're seeing a miracle because he's um, he's stable now and he was under the water for 20 minutes. And when they mm -hmm. found him and now they don't think, he, they think he's going to fully recover. And I went back through my text messages, Melissa, and Rejali. you texted me on Monday and you said you were praying for my family. And it was just really, I was like, okay, Lord, I didn't say anything. Melissa didn't know this, but I, I was praying for him. You were praying for my family. And it's kind of cr crazy. It's only God because you don't go under the water for 25 minutes and come back and fully recover. So I just want to praise him for that. Well, and, yeah, and his name is, Ster is that Sterling that you mentioned, Sterling? Well, yeah, they, we right now lift up Sterling to you. And we ask for a mighty miracle of healing spiritually and physically. We ask, Lord, that you would deliver him and heal him. 
lead him and guide him and help him understand what this means, Lord. Usually a drowning means they're drowning in the word and not thriving. It's killing them rather than cleansing them. But we're going to pray, Father, that you would turn that around in his life mightily and that he would thrive and zealously follow you and know you and thrive in your word. It may it cleanse him rather than destroy him. Yahweh, yeah, please be merciful and thank you for your mercy this far. We bless your name and you are good. Hmm. Kimberly. Follow that. I'm really sorry about curling there. I pray for a full recovery. Um, I, I was gonna ask for prayers. <clears throat> it's cu it's cutting out, Kimberly, honey. We can't hear it. Um, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I was gonna ask. I'm sorry. I'm just really tired, so my voice isn't as strong as normal. Um, I was asking for. Uh, I've been hearing God speak to me, um, trying to tell me something, and um, I keep praying for discernment, but uh, maybe I'm distracted or something because the clarity is not so clear. So, we'll pray so, for that. We do pray that Yavi will give you specific clarity, sweetie. Awesome. And we do pray, Father, just really speak to Kimberly, Lord, in the way she understands. Please help her to receive fully in the name of Yeshua. Okay, Tarinda. Um, so last night, my husband had gone to talk to a buddy. Um, he rode his motorcycle to um, a bar. And um, he texted me about 9 o'clock and said that he was going to come home soon. And then um, um, I texted him at 10 o'clock and said, I'm going to bed. So I um, went to bed. I woke up startled at midnight. And I started praying. And he called me. And the first words out of his mouth were, I need help. And I'm like, what's wrong? Are you okay? Um, he says, well, um, I got on the bike and left the bar bar and I didn't get very far and I felt like something was wrong so I pulled over and I dropped the bike and I can't pick it up and he says I need help and he says I need you to come where I'm at so I got dressed and me and my daughter went and we and on the way there he says um he called some her he called me back and he said he called somebody that he was talking to and they came and helped him pick it up and he insisted on riding at home he followed me and rode at home he said i can't leave it on the side of the road they'll find it and then i'll go to jail so anyway we got home everything was safe but um he was sitting there and i walked out of the living room into the bedroom and he goes what and i was like Nothing. And he's like, no, you want to say something? I said, yeah, I do. You're very selfish. And he yelled, you're the selfish one. You're the one that wants me to sit and read the Bible to you. And I was like, I'm not the one that wants you to read the Bible. God wants you to read the Bible. And I went in the bedroom and he kept yelling at me. And then he said something about um, what does our daughter want or something like that. And I said, I don't know, Brianna, what do you want? Because She was sitting next to me. And she goes, I want you to stop drinking. And I said, did you hear her? And he goes, no. And so she went in there and she yelled at him and she said, I want you to stop drinking. And then she fell over on top of him and started crying. And um, he made a promise last night and he woke up. This, well, he started throwing up after that. Um, he was up most of the night sick. He was thrown up so hard he has a black eye from that um he um has been real quiet today um very nice um i just i i asked for prayer earlier i just i just i feel like yahweh's working on him through this and um so i just everybody could continue to pray for him his name is david Absolutely, Lord. 
we do lift up David to you, Father, and we ask that you break that demon of um, alcoholism off. I just saw Khalil's depressed. Yeah, I deliver Khalil or anybody going through depression. Don't let them get let them give into temptation, Lord. It's a brief minute of life to pay for a consequential eternity. Yeah, they, let's keep our eyes on the prize. One bad choice is not worth paying eternally for. And we pray that David would understand that, that he would turn his life to you. Please give Torenda the grace and the patience to hold her tongue and not ever speak harshly to him. Help, Lord, her to love him into your kingdom. Please deliver this family. It is too much for children to see. For It's just too much, Father. They don't deserve this, and it's too hard for them. Please intervene quickly so he would repent and be saved and save Torenda. Fill her heart with such love and compassion that she has your heart. No matter what he's done to her, that she is there fighting for his soul. Thank you, Father. Um, guys, okay, so we're going to take just a few more. These are prayer requests, right? Everybody has a prayer request. We're going to take a few more and then get into the reading just because last time it ended up going like for a long time and we had opened it up to prayer earlier. Um, and so I'm just going to make sure we keep on time. Let's do this. We've got Sina, Cassandra, Billy, and then we're going to go on and then we're going to, I'm going to stop the prayer request. That, I mean, well, we opened it up already where I said people could pray. Um, and so we're going to do these three and then we're going to get with the reading and we're going to go on. Um, and then we'll say, we'll, what we're going to do is at the end, we'll open it up for discussion. So if there's just a discussion, please hold it. If it's a prayer request, bring it. So that way we can order, have it a little bit more orderly um, with that. Sina. Hi. So I had a dream decades ago that came back to me really strongly today. And in that dream, masses, everyone is outside and running and terrified. They're just running terrified. And I am with my children. And then I stop and I sit down and I'm holding my children and I look around me. And there is a few of us that are just at, at peace. And that came really strongly to me today. And also the sense that a bunch of us without maybe even realizing it are telling each other goodbye. I have had this really sense of melancholy today. I was dancing around with Yahweh mm -hmm. holding my babies of 40 years ago. I got to hold my babies today and I feel like a bunch of us are telling each other goodbye. And then I ate my dinner and it, my throat is burning. It feels like a sliver of chicken is stuck in the back of my throat and I was tempted to go to the doctor and I didn't and and I actually had the thought that I might be dying and I remembered the words to submit to Babylon and and I did but there's mm -hmm. the spirit of kind of like melancholy and, and letting go and I don't know what that prayer would be for me um well, yeah we do, well we pray for you Father God we do pray that you help Sina have her give her peace and strength and please help her to understand what you're speaking to her. Please help her fully just trust you and have faith in you and please heal her. Please help her throat. Please help whatever is going on, Lord. Um, deliver her, save her. I know sometimes chicken represents if we were chicken or scared to say something. I don't know, Lord. Just please help her to understand what you're speaking to her. Please mercifully guide her and lead her, protect her family, bring them all to you in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Okay. Billy has a prayer. Oh, okay. I'm assuming there's a few more prayer requests. I had said Billy would be the end, but they must, if it's urgent, go ahead. Or if it's a prayer request, go ahead and bring it. Um, um, Billy, discuss, like I said, discussion we'll do at the end. Prayer request, go ahead and bring them. Yeah. Um, uh, my prayer request is that uh, just for Yahweh to give me his strength. I feel like I'm just been battling with what we talked about, about the spirit versus letter of the law. And I just being obedient to the commandments of, of, of the Lord and uh, expecting like a visitation. Cause I almost feel like, you know, before coming to Torah, I was under like this heavy demonic oppression and um, I feel like I'm getting victory. And I feel like, you know, uh, since just being obedient to the Lord, um, God has been 
has been giving me understanding. So I uh, just pray that, um, that the Lord would give me strength to do what he's called me to do. So, um, absolutely. And we do pray for that father God, we do lift up Billy and I pray Lord for every single person, Billy and others, Lord, that they overcome completely the flesh and that they walk your Torah out in perfect unity with your spirit. That it's not just by the letter and it's not lukewarm and lackadaisical father, that they would completely zealously obey in spirit and in truth and break off the demons in the strongholds in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Angela and Isabel. Mm -hmm. I have a prayer request for my cousins, Leo and Kaden. What Leo kind of has a little bit of obsession with this with this blue hedgehog named Sonic. He's like a game and a and a show and also plays have them stop fighting each other a lot. They once Leo almost broke Kaden's jaw. Mm. So pray for that they don't fight and pray that they don't aren't obsessed with stuff. Well, Leo is the one that has a little, just a little bit of obsession. Almost okay. every game we play, he wants to have it Sonic-like. Right. And we do pray, Father, that you, that you would help all of your children be raised in holiness and away from the worldly influences that are pulling at them and that they wouldn't fight. Okay. And Brandy has a prayer request, it looks like. Hi, yes. Um, my mom and my stepdad has been going through a little rough patch in their marriage. And um I've been praying for it, so I wanted uh to ask you guys to keep them Absolutely. in their prayers as well. Absolutely. Father, we do lift up Brandy's mother and her stepdad, Yahweh, and Lord, what you have joined together, and even if it's a covenant that's made that wasn't of you. Once that covenant's made, it's binding. And just like you proved where um, where Joshua and his men were tricked by the Gibeonites, you made them honor that vow. You made them honor the vow. And Lord, and when Saul tried to destroy them and zealously rid the land, it says, because he was zealous for Israel, he got in trouble and brought a famine on the land. And so Lord, we know that that covenant, no matter what has happened, now stands in your eyes as eternal until they die. So Father, we ask that you would rebuke Satan, get him out of the way, that they would both be sanctified and brought as one together before you, that their marriage would be saved, and that they would fully come to obedience and submission of you. Rebuke this, the enemy that is trying to divide any marriage, Lord, specifically that. And Father, if you do cause the non-believer to leave because you're separating the seed of Abraham, this, I'm sorry, the seed of your seed from that of Satan, then so be it. And we understand, but only by your power, your strength, not when we break the covenant, but when you cause them to leave. So Yahweh, your will be done. Please save them. Please bring them together in you and raise them up mightily as your servants. Deliver them and deliver them in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Okay, and one more. We have another one just popped up. Heaven and Eternity in Tekoa. Hi. Um, I just want to pray for my husband and my family. Uh, yeah, he's going through some things and he has to make some decisions, but I just want, I just pray that God works on his heart to make the right decisions. Yavi, we do ask that you lift up Ryan tonight. We lift up Ryan to you. Yavi, you know the situation. I'm not going to speak it out. We're going to keep it silent. No. But what we do ask is that you would give him the Paul on the road to Damascus experience, that the blinders would fall off his eyes and he would come out of religion and simply follow you. Speak to him like never before. Open his ears to hear your truth. Father, please save, please save, Lord, please save him. Please save the whole family, make them one in you, provide for everybody's needs. But Yahweh, right now, we pray for deliverance, for religious deliverance, and that he will be set free in your truth. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen.
Now, the one exhortation I had to give to you guys, and we're going to start reading Jeremiah 29, was the Father's been telling me all week, Mel, some are lukewarm. Some are lukewarm. Some are not taking me zealously and seriously. And if you remember, I mean, I've been following Torah for 23 years. So we haven't known each other forever. We don't know all our background. I've We've been teaching Torah for 23 years, my husband and I. And there's been people zealous and then they get lukewarm and they draw lines in the sand. Some people misquote a verse that we read together in Isaiah. It says line upon line, precept upon precept. And it says that they may go backwards and fall. See, it's a bad thing to go line upon line, precept upon precept. If you have basic grammar comprehension, if you go back and look at that section, it says it is a bad thing to teach line upon line, precept upon precept. It is to them line upon line, precept upon precept, so that they may go backwards and fall. What is happening in that passage, if you understand the Hebrew, is that when you parse apart the word of God and you make excuses for slow behaviors and justify your inaction and in saying, well, I'm getting there. I'm taking it line by line, precept upon precept. I, I'm getting there. The disciples immediately left their nets and followed. You might not have another day and you might not go to hell for doing whatever lukewarm behaviors you're doing. But don't become less in the kingdom of heaven than you could have been because of a stupid choice of in of a convenience of a human condition. Zealousness is blessed. Lukewarm is chunks of vomit. Literally, Yeshua will vomit you out. And all week he's been telling me some of them are getting lukewarm. Some of them are staying lukewarm. I don't want them lukewarm. They need to be zealous. It is time to take a stand. And when you are totally zealous, you are totally sold out, totally in love. And it comes with joy because they can't take that from you. But when you let them wear at you and say, it's not that big of a deal, just whatever. Come on, let's just go to McDonald's and get some chicken nuggets. Who cares that it's touched the pork? Like it's chicken. You're trying. No I call you, I call your bluff. You're not trying. There's no try with God. There's do or don't do. You succeed or you fail. And if we fail, when we are accidentally not trying to fail and we're trying to succeed, God gives grace. But when you are lukewarm and slow to believe and slow to obey because of a convenience of human condition, you are rebellious and you are lazy and you are choosing you over God. And so those of you who, I don't know who needed to hear this. I have been hearing it all week. I think a lot of you are zealous. I see it. But if you know you're watching TV and movies and things that exemplify and glorify God or Satan over God, like how, how, how? I don't go to the whorehouse to watch them turn a trick and say, well, I'm not doing it. So it's fine. You don't turn on a TV show where they're committing sexual morality, celebrating gay culture, everything against God, teaching liberalism and say, well, I'm not doing it. I can just laugh at the show. Really? Yeshua would laugh at sin. Are we not supposed to hate and detest that which God hates and detests? Like we can't give up a little bit of a moment of pleasure that would pleasure, I'm saying pleasure. We really can't beat our flesh. We're so incapacitated to overcome our flesh that we have to just justify sin. We have to okay sin because it was convenient and it made me feel good in the moment and it's not that big of a deal. See, God can't use the people who say it's not that big of a deal. You might make it to the kingdom of heaven. He's not saying you're going to hell. But he don't want that. He wants the people who drops their nets and says, here am I. I'm right, where, where are you going, Lord? You have the words of life. I'm going with you. I'm, I'm leaving the world behind to go with you. I will no longer justify my actions. 
And so it's odd to me that people keep quoting this verse. And I know it's one per there's one person in particular who quotes it every day. And she thinks that the day begins at sunrise. And I don't mean to put her down, but I've seen even her comprehension of literature. She doesn't understand grammar because the day nowhere in scripture does the day begin at sunrise. That's a basic, literally really basic in congruence with her thinking of, of, of literature analysis and comprehension, literature and literature analysis of uh, comprehension. But if you are trying to say that you teach line upon line, precept upon precept, you're literally saying you're doing that, which is evil in God's eyes. And if you tell yourself, I'm not there yet, I'll get there. And you're justifying your action and not kicking yourself in the butt. You better reevaluate because I tell you what, when I mess up, I'm sick to my stomach. I'm on my knees and I'm like, dang it. I'm sorry. Don't give up on me, Lord. I'm going to try again. You don't get to just justify ourselves. We are to be zealous. This is the time to enter the holiness race like never before. And whatever, I, all I've heard all week is that I'm supposed to encourage you guys to be zealous. Not legalistic, not Judaistic. I like the word Judaistic better. But it is not okay to pat ourselves on the back. It is not okay to say we've made it. Paul says, I don't even count myself worthy. I, I don't know if I've apprehended. We are to run this race to the finish line. We're in the fourth leg of the, of the 400 meter dash or the 1600, whatever you want to say. We're on the last leg. This is the time your muscles are burning, you're tired, and you're going to kick. I was a long, I was the 400 meter runner. So I know this is the race that's hard. That last leg, your legs want to freeze up. You've depleted everything. You have nothing left. And it is sheer willpower at that point. And that's where you guys are at, some of you. And we're just about to really all be there, no matter what, physically. So get off your haunches, lose your fat butt, get in shape and run the race because we need to kick each other forward, help each other to good works. And I was an athlete. Some of you don't know what it's like, but when you have an a, a team member who's like, oh, I can't give anymore and you're giving your all, it sucks because they're bringing you down. Because remember, Aiken brought judgment on all of his family. Remember at I the whole children of Israel, God rejected them because of one person. Well, if you, you know what I'm saying? So we don't get to be in, in, inextricated from each other. We are inextricably intertwined. So if you're falling behind, it's going to pull me down. If I'm falling behind, it's going to pull you down. If you are not performing zealously the word of God, so you're supposed to be provoking me to good works, encouraging me, helping me. I'm supposed to be helping you feeding you, teaching you, pushing you on. If any one of us starts to get lukewarm, we kick each other up and say, come on. So no justification of our actions, no compromising with the world. We are not going to eat at the table of light and darkness. And I know that's what God is calling. Holiness, holiness, holiness. So there's the word I had to give. I was told to give an exhortation. Um, I don't know who needed to hear it. I always need to hear it. I always review, you know, like speak Lord. <laughs> I want to run the race to the end. So you see the finish line. So do not let Satan come in. The other thing that's going to be happening to a lot of you and that has happened to a lot of you, um, you will start Satan. His whole job is to find the new way to get you tricked. He is going to try to get you away from the body. He's going to make you think um, bad thoughts of me or bad thoughts of Cassandra or each other, or that Torah is wrong. He's going to make you start questioning everything. You better know the word of God like never before. You better never have a negative thought. Don't hold on. Don't even let, don't do emotional things. Don't let emotions come in like, oh, the person doesn't like me anymore. Or they're, 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 they're being manipulated. Whatever it is. No, we love each other. We have grace. We love each other. We cover each other. We help each other. We push each other on. We are body. We're together. Satan is going to attack you more than ever right now to get you alone. Because the way a lion works is he gets one sheep alone and devours you through depression, oppression, temptation, anger, isolation, insecurities, whatever it is. If you feel when you start to pack off from somebody, don't do it. You hang on like never before and you press in. You need the body. Nobody can function alone. I mean, you're alone, but you're not alone. You know what I'm saying? You have Yahweh. 
but we also need the body together, unified. So if Satan or other people are putting doubts in your head, you're going to have to know the voice of God and rebuke that. And let's go forward together. So I'm just praying that everybody can remember that Satan's coming after you. Do not think you have made it. <laughs> he is coming after you hard. Know your enemy. Know the truth of God so you can defeat the enemy. Okay. Any other, any, okay. We didn't have any other prayer requests. Okay. So feel free to join the zoom guys. If you'd like to, I know this is super late for people. Um, we're in Jeremiah 29 and whoever wants to read may read and Yahweh is good. We just need to keep our heads in the game, guys. We hold each other's hands. We don't let anybody fall. That's the other thing. If Yahweh hasn't told us to put somebody out, if it's just somebody falling behind, run after him. If you see him, guys, catch him in that net. If you see somebody with drawing, pulling back, whatever. Danielle. Um, I guess I just would hope for um, just a quick prayer request, please. Um, tonight, while I was I had my boys at the park and Gavin was eating food over on the side and um, Dylan asked me where Gavin was or something. And I think I said like, oh, he's over there eating food. And right when I said that, my my left pinky had a pain in it, like a very obvious pain. And I know that Gavin represents my innocence. And um, tonight I was just sitting here and I wasn't hungry yet. I made my boys eat their dinner and um, I was just sitting here and like, I thought I, I was feeling hungry at that point. And um, so I felt like a, but a, a little bit of like an itch in my right hand, like in my right palm. And I was like, I don't know if that means like I'm itching to eat when I shouldn't. I don't know, but I went ahead and eat. I brought my dinner in here and I sat down and moments later, Gavin like hit his head on that coffee table that you gave me that you said reminds you of the altar and it hurt him really bad. Um, and so I just, I don't know if I'm being shown that I'm oppressed by food because, you know, the issue that I've been dealing with. Um, but just that Yahweh would help me to overcome and understand, you know, um, so. Yeah. And I think a lot of us do pray that for you. Um, and there's a bigger issue than just spiritual. And the things you were telling me the other day that I won't say were very much signs of an eating disorder. At the same point, we know God does have people fast. And so that balance of what to do, because you are Yahweh and he does love you and he will use you. Um, and so Lord, we all together lift up Danielle and we ask that this has been going on for a long time now, this confusion. Yahweh, please bind and rebuke the demon of confusion. Please let any disorder, any mental disorder of demonic oppression of the eating disorder, get it gone. And in your truth and your faithfulness, lead her how to behave in this situation with you. Please give her strong discernment when to fast, when not to fast, help her not even to con think about or be obsessed with food help that whole body dysmorphia everything like that just be completely healed and please bless her protect her and save her lord she's gone through enough please deliver her and help her in the name of Yeshua we pray amen well we love you um and a lot of you if you have doubts and it's not specific in the word of god like am i supposed to fast or not what you have to do is just pray with calmness and say, Lord, I trust that you'll speak to me. You don't have to speak on my dime. Like you can speak when you're going to speak. So if you don't hear a clear answer, then you're just going to have to commit to what you believe God said and say, Father, I'm just going to entrust my life to you. I believe you said this with no fear, no condemnation, because I know you love me. You'll help me through this. I'm just going to completely commit to this. If I'm wrong, please correct me. What happens is, is that when you keep opening up to doubts, Satan will play with your mind. Satan will make you doubt everything. And what I've told Danielle before, I'm going to tell all of you, you have to commit unless Yahweh makes it extremely clear. We have to remember, God does not need us for his plan. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need you. We're not special. He loves us. And his purpose will be done. He loves us to communicate with him and help him obey him. 
but it doesn't come with confusion. He doesn't need you to fast. He doesn't need any one of you to fast. His will is going to be done no matter what you do. He likes you to participate with him. He likes you to be the mouth that shares. If you don't share, somebody else will come along and share. Believe me, he will get through to that person. He doesn't, you got to remember that. None of it, like, you guys would have come to Torah if I hadn't spoken. Some other big mouth would have come on here, like with just his motor, motor mouth, right? We got to remember that about ourselves. God doesn't need us. He chooses to partner. Like he said, like, will you come help me? Will you do this with me? I want to be one with you. So we can't put such stock in our work so that we think that God needs that for anything to happen. I am not saved by my works. My works do not save anybody else. However, he desires us to work with him to help him. And when you fear, you will only be tormented by Satan. If you're nervous or worried, you will only be tormented by Satan. Perfect love casts out fear. You have to know. This is how I've gotten to the point I am. I'm like, no, my daddy loves me. I think he told me to do this right now. If I'm not supposed to, well, he'll make it clear that I wasn't supposed to. Yahweh, it doesn't contradict Torah. It's just not a clear answer if I was supposed to go here or there. So Lord, make it clear. But I have no fear. I have no doubts. I just, I don't worry. I just go. And then the frying pan either hits me in the head. It's like, oh, you're supposed to go that way. Okay, thanks, Father. But the minute you worry, you will never hear from God. You cannot hear God through worry. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that he is God. You are not God. You are not. Nothing you do is necessary for the kingdom of heaven. He will have his will accomplished. But he desires to work with you. But he is not. If he is trying to get you, for example, if he says, hey, would you fast for me? I want you to fast right now. His purpose is still going to be accomplished. Nothing can stop his. I mean, have you read the Bible? What's going to stop him? What's going to stop our God? Nothing. Does he teach us lessons, lessons through obedience and through certain actions and submission? Absolutely. But fear is not of God. Worry is not of God. So you have to take a deep breath, rebuke that worry and things, and, and, just, fo and just commit. Say, okay, I think you told me to do this. So I'm going to do it. And, okay. Jeremiah. 29 who would like to read somebody who doesn't usually read want to read or i know sometimes we have like the same three or four people read which is fine some of you hate reading out loud but i want to give everybody a chance some of the shy people who if you'd like to read feel free to read um and you don't have to if you don't feel comfortable nobody wants to put you on the spot <clears throat> Okay. Well, then, if anybody wants to read who normally reads, feel free to read too. Jeanette. Oh, Danielle, if you want to read, that's fine. Did you want to read? No, I was just going to say I'll read if no one else wants to. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and that's awesome. Either one of you. And then, and then everybody needs to remember just to pray for Danielle to not have fear. And Jeanette, both of these, these two people right here, keep these sisters lifted up. No doubts, no fear, no condemnation, no insecurities. Yahweh loves you. Your daddy loves you. You can't mess up past his love, especially when you're trying. Can't mess up past his love. His arm is way longer than your mess ups. And if you are messing up, he's going to help you understand and it's not a sin if you like to not fast, like if you didn't understand. And he definitely doesn't want you unhealthy. Okay. So 29. Thank you. I love you all. Well, we no. love you. We need you. But we need you free of the worry so we don't talk about this anymore. We need to focus on the kingdom work. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people who Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. 
This happened after Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisa, or Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus says Yahweh Sebaot, Lord, the Lord of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit, take wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters that you that you may be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to Yahweh for it for in its peace you will have peace for thus says Yahweh, Yahweh of hosts the Elohim of Israel do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you nor listen to your dreams which you have caused to be dreamed for they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says Yahweh. And then remember, the prophecy was, they were saying, two years, you're going to come back. Two years. And Yahweh's like, no. No, 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 no. 70 years. Build your houses. Plant your vineyards. I'm going to watch over you. Submit to Babylon. Just go ahead and do this. You have, those of you who are good parents, and some of you who are good parents, but might need to learn a lesson. If your child incurs a punishment, you need to follow through and not let go. They need to feel the discipline. If you take away a toy just because they feel sad, you don't give it back. They need to feel it. You don't stop the punishment because they said, I'm daddy, I'm sorry, mommy, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, well, fine. Now you can have ice cream or whatever. No. If you love your children, you will let them feel the sting of their consequence. You love them, you forgive them, and you hold them. You're like, that's so awesome that you that you repented of this. That's so awesome that you acknowledged what you did was wrong. But you still don't get your toy until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or like Morgan's family, this is hilarious. They have to eat white rice. So their punishment is just eating white rice, nothing else, mm -hmm. like salt no flavoring on it no nothing and so if they get in trouble it's white rice and so i'll go to the house and one of the girls will be like we i have to eat white rice melissa i have to eat white rice and so you know and they don't get there's no letting out of that and so with yave what he's telling them no matter what you do this seven years is going to be here some of you right now are in a consequence for your actions for me, my husband had a vasectomy when my son was one month old. We had a consequence. I didn't have another child. But God promised me always that my children will be more than those of the barren. I wanted a million babies. I loved being pregnant. I would have been pregnant. My whole I definitely would have been the barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen all the time. I would have had, I would have been pregnant till the day I went through menopause. I'm not joking. I loved being pregnant. I loved it. I loved being fed as a house with this little baby in me. I loved it. I got to do it once. And then we had a vasectomy. And Yahweh always said, do you not think I could heal him? Submit. Accept your consequence. If this is just earthly. You have eternal rewards. And he always told me, your children will be more. You have my children, Mel. You are my wife. You have my children. I put them in your care. And so some of you are going to feel that heartbreak. If you're a woman, you know that heartbreak. If you have not, you know, it's a heartbreak. It really does. I don't know if men feel it the same way as a woman, but when you don't have more children, you're just like heartbroken. Because especially knowing I could have had more babies. So then you struggle with not being mad at somebody. And they didn't. I always put it down. But you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, I had to overcome bitterness, hurt, frustration. I had to accept a consequence. Some of you right now have consequences for actions from your past. But go plant your vineyards, build your houses, dwell where you are, repent from those sins, and God will be good to you and watch over you. And he'll bless you. Your earthly life is temporary. Moses did not get to go into the promised land. 
Moses. Moses. Name me one person closer to God in the Bible other than Yeshua, who was God. Moses didn't get to go into the promised land after all that work. And he begged God, come on, come on, just let me go. Nope. Nope. Go up, walk up. You can see it, but you don't get to go. See, God doesn't change. Do you see how American parents aren't like good God parents? Yahweh didn't change his mind. He said, nope, you don't get to go in. And Moses begged and begged and begged and begged. Your child will beg and beg and beg and beg and beg. No. Because all of us now can look what happened to Moses. Moses didn't get to go into the promised land. What makes us think that our sins won't keep us out of the promised land? Who do we think we are when there's not been one man higher than Moses? Do you get what I'm saying? So if you have questions about that, let me know later, not right now, at the end of the conversation or DM me later. That's This is a good chapter for us tonight because a lot of you are finally feeling the stings, your consequences. See, for all these years of your life, you have you have band-aided it, covered it up, and numbed it. You've medicated it, done whatever it takes to not feel the pain. And God's like, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm spanking you here and spanking you there and spanking you there, and you're not learning your lesson. You just keep pushing my hand away. You just keep pushing his hand away. And now you have submitted your lives to him. And some of you are having a reality check of like, ooh, this is what God was trying to get through my head for the last 10, 20, two, whatever, however many years, you right? So in that feeling of that pain, run into the arms of the father and let him hold you. Say, I'm sorry, daddy. Thank you for the lesson. Help me to learn. And I'm going to shout it from the rooftops so I can help others avoid my sins. You know why I tell you all of my sins? Why there's nothing in my life you don't know about me? Go ahead, try to gossip about me. Everybody knows everything. What do I have to hide? My employees had the passwords to all my phones. Nobody, I, my Nothing of my life is hidden from anybody. I would say, hey, go check my phone. Go do this. You can have anything. You, Some of you, I don't divulge your stuff. Like Anna's come to me with things. I don't talk to that about that to Cassandra or Danielle or heaven. Nobody knows anything. I don't talk about that. I'll never talk to them about you. But you can talk about me because my life is an open story. And my life will be used for the glory of God. And my sins will be used to help others stop, avoid those sins. So I encourage you to use your stories and your shortcomings. Make yourself, let yourself look like a fool like I am. I'm open with what I did stupid so that others might not make the same choice. I don't want them to have the consequence that I have. So when I hear somebody talking about getting a vasectomy, I'm like, no, 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 you regret it. Okay. Keep reading. Please. Thank you. So that are bad. Yada. Ani ohibet after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope, that you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says Yahweh, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says Yahweh, and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Okay, stop. Well, Yahweh just told me to tell you. There will be a day when you get to celebrate Passover. There will be a day when you get to celebrate Sukkot. There will be a day when you will be healed. If you hold on. Notice he says, then you will call on my name. He doesn't say now. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You need to hold on to the garment. You need to hold on. 
through the tough times with spousal betrayals, family betrayals, persecution, okay? There will be a day where you will be healed. I will endure what I go through now. I have, so, <laughs> I feel like a walking, <laughs> like a band-aid. What's that called when you stitch them all together? Like I'm a raggedy and all. I have so many injuries and things and consequences and things that I'm like, okay, thank you for that reminder. I'm like a little raggedy and doll, like all sewed together in different places. I will be healed. I will be healed. Even if not now, I will hold on for the day that it's coming. You need to hold on. That's powerful. So those of you who are brokenhearted, your heart will be healed. You will be healed physically. You will hear his voice. You will get through this. You will get through this valley. If, if, if you hold on. But the minute you stop and you turn back to Egypt for help, and the minute you fight against what he is trying to get you to learn, what he is doing with the, the punishment he is doing on your life or putting on your life to help you learn. If you sneak out of the house and go do a replacement ceremony for Passover, and you don't feel what Zephaniah 3.18 says you're supposed to feel, you are going to miss the reward. If you don't let yourself feel the consequence of speaking harshly with your tooth, or you don't feel the consequences of your hard heart because you are bitter to somebody, or you don't let God speak to you, you will not be refined as gold. It does not say you're going to hell for that. I'm going to be very clear. Your level in the kingdom of heaven is very dependent on you. You choose what you want for eternity. I'm choosing him. And I will be broken and persecuted and have everyone betray me and have everybody hate me and call me names. I will lose my family, lose my inheritance, lose all the things you know I've given up. Because I want him. So I will go through heart attacks, broken bones. I fell in a hole this week again, hurt that ankle again. And somebody, somebody, well, I knew who it was. I thought I show up and she said, my mom's praying against you. All she can talk about is what a witch you are and what a false prophet you are. And she hates you and she's praying against you. And I'm like, well, there we go. Now I know where all this attack's coming from. I will endure. I will not fight. I will not go to a doctor. I will not do any of that. You guys choose your path, but I would love to see you right there with him. I want you to have him, but more importantly, I want him to have you. I want him to have you because he died for you. He died to have you. And when you understand that, then you realize, oh, okay. This little bit of pain for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, two days, whatever it is, I'll, I'll go through it, Lord. I didn't go back to the doctor. We didn't get a reversal. We could have. I submitted because God said, do you think I couldn't heal him? And I knew he could. So he could heal you. He will help you if it's appropriate. If there's a consequence, just remember, hold on. The healing's coming. Eventually, if not now. Okay. Sorry, he just made me, he told me to say that there. So I had to stop. Oh, thank you. Because you have said, Yahweh has raised up prophets for us in Babylon. Therefore, thus says Yahweh concerning the king who sits on the throne of David, concerning all the people who dwell in the city, and concerning your brother who have not gone out with you into captivity. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, Behold, I will send on them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like rotten figs that cannot be eaten, they are so bad. And I will pursue them with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence, and I will deliver them to trouble among all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse, an astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. 
because they have not heeded my words, says Yahweh, which I sent to them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. Neither would you heed, says Yahweh. Therefore hear the word of Yahweh, all you of the captivity, whom I have sent to, from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says Yahweh Sebaot, the Elohim of Israel, concerning Ahab, the son of Koliah, and Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who prophesy a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. And because of them, a curse shall be taken up by all the captivity of Babylon who are in Babylon. No, I'm sorry, captivity of Judah who are in Babylon, saying, Yahweh make you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire, because they have done disgraceful things in Israel, have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives, and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them. Indeed, I know and am a witness, says Yahweh. You shall also speak to Shemaiah the, Nehemel, the Nehelamite, saying, Thus speaks Yahweh Sebo, the Elohim of Israel, saying, You have sent letters in your name to all the people who are at Jerusalem, to Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, Yahweh has made you priest instead of Jehoiada, the priest, so that there should be officers in the house of Yahweh over every man who is demented and considers himself a prophet, that you should put him in prison and in the stocks. Now, therefore, why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who makes himself a prophet, a prophet to you? For he has sent us in Babylon, saying, he has sent to us in Babylon, saying, this captivity is long, build houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat their fruit. Now Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah, saying, Send to all those in captivity, saying, Thus says Yahweh concerning Shemaiah the Nehel Nehelamite, Because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, and I have not sent him, and he has caused you to trust in a lie, therefore thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah the Nehelamite and his family, he shall not have anyone to dwell in his people, nor shall he see the good that I will do for my people, says Yahweh, because he has taught rebellion against Yahweh. Okay, and so if you understand what was going on here, Yahweh is raising up prophets, but then there's these false prophets who they think Yahweh raised up, but they didn't. Yahweh didn't raise them up. And they're prophesying that the captivity, captivity would be short, that they're going to come back. That everything's fine. Meanwhile, Jeremiah is saying, it's 70 years. And they're like, no, two years, we're coming back. See, when his prophet speaks to you, it's usually not good. Because a prophet has to come to warn you of your errors. They very rarely have a good word, right? It's not like they need to tell you a good job. Because none of us really get a good job compared to Yahweh. He's always got to kind of kick us in the butt somewhere. He loves us. And he will say thank you and well done eventually. You get what I'm saying. But what they were saying is in this letter, they wrote this letter about Jeremiah. And they're like, why did you not put Jeremiah in the stocks? Because he's prophesying. They wanted to lock Jeremiah up because he was telling them the truth of Yahweh. Hey, this, this is going to be a long captivity. They want to kill us. They want to destroy us. They hate us because we say there's a tribulation coming. And those same prophets, those same pastors who teach that there's no tribulation coming, they're going to be taken off guard. And those are the ones who are going to suffer severely, just like these false prophets did. Cass. I just um, wanted to, I guess, point out that this is like one of many times where one person sins gravely and many people punish for their action. And we see that a lot yes. in Torah. Yep. One person, the king, like, and for the king of Manasseh, the, the, the Yahweh literally says, because of the sins of Manasseh, I am definitely going to punish these people. I mean, this is like really ridiculous. Your sin affects everybody around you. So if you love your family, choose to not sin as much as you can. Mickey. Do we know what Shemaiah prophesied? Did I miss that? 
Well, we talked about it the other day, just some of the prophets that were passed sure, All the prophets were basically saying like what pastors do. There's no preacher rapture. What they were saying was two years, you're going to come back. Or a lot of them were saying, we're not going to be captured. Jerusalem shall, we shall be here. We shall have the stockhouses filled. They will not touch us. This is the city of Yahweh. And he's like, dude, I'm touching you. Like I'm coming for you. I'm sending Babylon to punish you. And so he was speaking peace. They were speaking peace and good things. And that wasn't what was coming. And just like that, these Christians think they're going to go have some tea party and watch the Super Bowl version of the tribulation. While those dirty Jews, uh, mind you, the, the disciples were all Jews. I, you know, I'm a Jew who believes in Jesus. There's a lot of Jews who believe in Jesus. Um, they just have to go through it because they don't believe in Jesus. There's a lot of Jews who believe in Jesus. It's not just for the Jews, people. The tribulation is for God's people to refine us and make us white. Okay, I'm not sick. I'm very, 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 very allergic to grass. And we are so dry this year. And I have to water all the time outside with this stuff. It's like, I'm just like very stuffy tonight. So if you could pray for me, thank you. Um. Okay, any questions on that chapter? Just on that chapter? Cass, did you have one? I heard your, I saw your lips do something. Oh, I was just saying no questions online or on live. Chapter 30, who wants to read? I can read. I think Mickey has a question. She has her hands raised. I think she forgot. She already asked her question, but thank you. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, said the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now to those now, in captivity, it did not look like that. They had to hold on to the future promise. I will, I will, I will. We're going to go through the most terrible time ever of human history. You better remember what God's going to do. You need that promise. You need those promises. You need that hope. You need to remember, go through this because you're coming out the fire clean for him, okay? We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see. Whether a man is ever in labor with child, so why do I see every man with his hands on his loins, like a woman in labor, and all faces turned pale? Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it, and that it is a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, for Stop. it shall come. This is the prophecy. Who is the tribulation for? It's called the time of whose trouble? Jacob's Jacob. How many sons did Jacob have? 12. Well, and then Ephraim and Manasseh, you know, Joseph got 13. Jews are a Southern kingdom. Do you understand why I teach so strongly about the 10 lost tribes of Israel? Because if a Christian understood his or her identity as the lost tribes of Israel, as part of Jacob, they could not deny they will go through the tribulation. If you won't know your identity as God's child, you know what is intended for you. This is why the church tries to separate themselves. Boni baloney, the first word for church, is first used to describe the children of Israel in the book of Exodus. The word ecclesia describes the children of Israel at the mountain. And so any Gentile that is grafted in and becomes part of the commonwealth of Israel is called an Israelite. That's Ruth, Caleb, Romans 11, Exodus 12, 49, Ezekiel 47. Okay, Billy. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, you had mentioned about the church being separated. Is that the like a dot? By the way, it's a fancy word. I'm just learning this. Dispensationalism, is that not what that is? So dispensationalism, yes, they teach that the church replaced Israel. Which okay. is as like the bride. They don't okay. know. They don't understand. See, they don't understand their identity. 
if the church, if the true believers and Christians understood their identity, they would understand that the Ephraimites became the fullness of the Gentiles, prophesied to awaken around the year 2000. You guys are the grandbabies of the movement. But there's been a movement going on for almost 30 years now, right? That movement was prophesied in scripture. And so if they understood that, they would understand their identity as Israel. If they could understand that there's in going into the new Jerusalem, 12 gates of the 12 tribes of Israel, and that doesn't say Pentecostal, Baptist, or Lutheran. It, it doesn't say Bethal, but this, Beth Messiah, you know, that doesn't say any of that. It says Zebulun, Dan, Aphtali, Asher. You get what I'm saying. See, I stress the teaching of the two houses of Israel. And that's why I did it fairly early with you guys, because once you know your identity, you know your purpose, you know your walk. It's just like anything any worldly person will tell you. Who are you? Who are you? If you don't know who you are, you're lost, right? I know who I am. That's why you can't, you can't move me from the Torah. I know who I am. I know his word. You need to know who you are. Danielle needs to know who she is to God. So she knows if she doesn't understand if she's supposed to fast or not, it's not a big deal to God. God doesn't really need her to fast. He's not, like, he doesn't, she needs to know who she is to him, that he loves her. He needs to, I, when I came to Torah and the God told me, see, my family was blood Jews. They knew I did not. I live in a very happy little dumb bubble of incomprehensiveness. I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know I was Jewish. And God said I was a Levite. All I knew when I was reading scriptures for those first three years was that any Gentile, I could see all through scripture, Gent I had to understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Gentiles had to obey the law if they wanted to follow God. Well, they didn't have to. You can do whatever you want. That's their calling as God's child. So when my Aunt Marie came, from Missouri, and was like, well, of course, we're Jewish. Don't you know we're, Gen we're like, we're Levites, we're Kohen. Like, I about died. My mom about died. I'm like, oh, but what the father spoke in my ear, he said, Mel, I needed you to understand it didn't matter if you were Jew or Gentile. And I, when you're sharing with people, I needed you to be so adamant from the Gentile perspective that the law was for everyone then you could understand your identity because then they can't come at you with that. It's just for the Jews. Now, you know. And so that's why I had to not know my identity other than no matter who I am, I'm an Israelite if I believe in God. And so for those of you, I've had people in the past ask me, why are you even caring about this 10 Northern tribes of Israel? That's why. Your identity is everything. See, when you know you're bought at a price and you know you belong to Yahweh, you don't make the same sinful choices, do you? When you know you're a daughter of the king, when you know you're a son of the king, you're not going to make those same choices. I know who I am. You need to know who you are. Right? Um, okay. Okay. Let's keep reading, but that this verse right here, Jeremiah 30, is really good to you because it is the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck and will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. That's Therefore, issue, do by the way. <laughs> therefore do not fear O oh, my servant jacob says the lord nor be dismayed O oh, israel for behold i will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity jacob shall return have rest and be quiet and no one shall make him afraid for i am with you says the lord to save you though i make a full end of all the nations where I scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end to you, but I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. Okay, stop. For We're going to do some math. One in one is how much? 
two. Time of Jacob's trouble, right here in verse seven. Time of Jacob's trouble. The Christians, let me tell you what a Christian says. The tribulation, see, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, when does the time of Jacob's trouble happen? In the end days. The, they all know it's the tribulation. Well, what did it just say he's going to do for his people after the tribulation? What's going to happen after this time of Jacob's trouble? He's going to bring us back into the land. And David's going to be our king, Yeshua. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They got a big problem here. They just said the church replaced Israel. But God is telling us that Israel comes back as his people. They just said that the church did away, the modern Babylonian harlot church, replaced the Israelites. And the tribulation's only for them because those wicked Jews, they, you know. Uh, do you see how this doesn't work in their theory? Because the time of Jacob's trouble is for God's bride, who is going to have Yeshua as king and dwell in the land with him. Where are those Gentiles going to be? Oh, Ezekiel 47 says, if they believe in God, they come back with his people. Oh, this shuts down their argument. Nothing shuts down foolish arguments. But if they have any brain or logic, this shuts that argument down. If anybody has a question, this defies every bit of dispensationalism theory out there. Yahweh will, he will, after Jacob's trouble, he's bringing us back. And we're told in Ezekiel 47, the last three verses, the Gentiles come back with us who are believers. And if they don't, they get to be our servants. Remember we read all those verses in Isaiah and Jeremiah where they're going to be our servants. I always tell them, you don't want to be my servant? Wouldn't you just rather be my brother? You don't have to be my servant, but if you don't repent and you continue to call yourself a Gentile, then you're going to be my servant because I'm an Israelite. Like, I don't know who you, you claim to be. I'm an Israelite. So I'm going here. I'm going back. And then it says, you're going to serve me. And it literally says he's going to make a full end of the nations to which they were scattered. Gentiles. You better be one of God's children if you want to make it through this thing. I mean, we know there's going to be a few people left, but you do you see the logic that I was trying to take you through here? This is a very, very clear proof. The, the, the Gentiles better hurry up and grab on. They better get with the game here. Okay. For thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. There is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They that do not, not condoning medicines. It's just talking about, it's like a spoof. There's like, you have nothing to heal you. No concoction, nothing. They do not seek you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. Why do you cry about your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. I have done these things to you. Therefore, all those who devour Can you. Can I shall stop be right devoured. there? I'm sorry. Somebody asked me today. I'm so sorry, Anna. Somebody asked me today, where does it show in scripture that, our, that we're sick because of our sins? Well, here's another good place for it right here. This is a really good section. I mean, literally, he says, I struck you. I wounded you. I afflicted you. Okay. There we go. Therefore, all those who devour you shall be devoured. All and all of your adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. Those who plunder you shall become plunder. And all those who prey upon you, I will make a prey, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion. No one seeks her. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be built upon its own mound, and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. 
I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Their children shall also shall be as before and their congregation shall be established before me. I will punish all those who oppress That's the them. word like the, the, they often translate as church, by the way. Congregations means like it's the same kind of thought, just so you know. And I will punish all those who oppress them. Their nobles shall be among them, and their governor shall come from their midst. Then I will cause them to draw near, and he shall approach me. For who is he who pledged his heart to approach me, says the Lord? You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury, and continuing whirlwind, it will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not return until he has done it and until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will consider it. Oh, God didn't cast off his people for all they've done. In fact, we're going to read that in the next few chapters here. Did the church replace Israel? Did those dirty Jews just lose their inheritance? No. He made a covenant that's eternal, and he will save us. He will save the Israelites. Go ahead, Cass. Um, they, someone had uh, made a statement on here, not really a question, but, uh, I just thought that it'd be good for you to address it. Um, someone says that many people in the past and now claim Gentiles are a race of people, like a specific race of person. Uh, I've seen some churches even teach that. That's just not true. There's, there was 153 Greek, which I love Danielle's post today. I didn't even realize. I just saw her picture. I didn't realize then she had talked about doing the teaching. So, oh, that's great. I didn't get to post much. Cause like I said, if you write, I won't going to read it. If you put a meme, I'll read the meme. I don't read all your stuff. Great. Good job. I'm sure you're doing it great. I just don't have time for that. But, um, at the time Yeshua was on the earth on here in the book of John, he says, cast out your nets one more time to the right side, cast out the net. They pull in 153 fish at that time there were 153 gentile or greek nations coincidence i think not why would john even write the number because it mattered it was an important thing for them to take note of that i will save my fish oh wait let me go back to genesis chapter 48 where the gentile where ephraimites and manasseh were told they would multiply like the fish hadagu okay so they're gonna multiply like the fish so then all of a sudden they knew that the fish, Jeremiah, remember we just read it, I'm going to send for fishers of men and then the hunters. So they get all these pictures through scripture that the children of Israel are likened to fish. And so we knew there was 153 different Gentile nations. See, it talks about um, that each nation in the book of Genesis was given, like where God had established their nation, their place. Literally, he divided the land. He gave the land to Edom. He gave the land to Ammon. He gave the loan, land to Israel. Every nation has their own place that Yahweh literally carved out for them. He said, you're going to dwell here. And so nation as a whole isn't just one big thing. There's not just one nation. There are a, multi, a plurality of different nations who were under different sons of like, People after the Noah, after they settled different places. Okay. Cass. Um, and can you just, uh, for anyone who's watching this later on, uh, just cover what Gentile is in Hebrew and what that word literally translates to? Well, goy, it just means like stranger, foreigner, mm -hmm. Gentile. Goy, goyim is plural, goy. So when it says... Ephraim and Manasseh will become the Melo Hagoyim, the fullness of the Gentiles. Melo is fullness. Um, Hagoyim is the Gentiles, the nations, the foreigners. Um, and so I hope that answered that question that there's not just one unit of Gentiles. Um, people, man, I'm so tired of people just like illiterate people who make it, not that this person did it. I'm just saying I, I'm so tired of, sometimes I do get tired of having to like, Oh my gosh, there's the sun doesn't, this day doesn't begin at sunrise. No, the earth's not flat. No, there's not, you know, I mean, I mean, just I sometimes, and no, his name can't be Yahusha or Yahuwah. Sometimes I do get tired of people who are missing some very basic, obvious things. In fact, I loved it the other day. My friend Thomas Puckett, which I think some of you are friends with him, um, he put this picture up there and the Lord said, comment. 
I don't usually comment on people's posts. You'll see that because I don't even have time. So Thomas Puckett had been praying about something and he didn't tell me what we hadn't been talking about that. And I knew he posted a picture of clouds. <laughs> what do you see at sunrise and sunset? Where is where where does the light? What do you see in the clouds? Where does the sun reflect off of the bottom or the top of the clouds? The bottom. On a flat Earth model, they have the sun parallel to the Earth. They say the flat the the ground is here and the sun rotates in an exact plane this way. Now you tell me on a flat Earth model then how could the rays of the sun reflect just at sunrise and sunset off the bottom of the clouds? Wouldn't happen, would it? Wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen on a flat earth model. Couldn't. If the sun's always up here, it's always going to be above the clouds or at the same parallel to the clouds, or whatever. It's not going to come down here and then reflect off the bottom of the clouds. He posted that. I knew exactly what he was seeing. I said, because I had shared it and then he saw it. He's like, you're right. I could, you can't, there's no way on a flat earth model, this would, your clouds, you wouldn't see the sun reflecting off them at the, those times of the day. So <laughs> I do sometimes get tired of these things that are like, I know that the Yahweh has told me his answers. I know. And he's made it very clear. But I have to remind myself and I encourage, I tell the story to share you guys. We must be patient with everybody and love everybody. Some people aren't going to see what you see right away. It doesn't, we can't get frustrated. We don't get a, like be like, oh, you know, like, oh my gosh, I explained this 15,000 times because people are always like, how are you so patient? And it's like, what are we called to be? Like, who are we? I'm going to say the same thing 15,000 times tomorrow to tomorrow, the next day to this Dale gets in the same arguments every day. It's going to be the same words. Be patient. You got to be patient. We got to be patient. Some things are very, when the Lord reveals it, you can't not see it. Some people are struggling. It, also, we just don't argue about debatable issues. It, some of those things just don't really matter. I don't care if you think the earth is shaped like a tart pyramid, a hot dog, whatever. Maybe it's shaped like Danielle, huh? Where'd she go? Okay, Marisol. I know, finding that unmute button is the big one for everybody. I think it's at the bottom with the microphone. She's looking. I don't have a phone thing that I'm doing it on. If you're on your phone, it's on the bottom left. You gotta you gotta tap on the screen so that the icons come up. Okay. Can you do that, Marcel? Here, I'll ask. Sorry, I didn't even know you called my name. I was just waiting. I'm all like, should I go? I didn't even hear you. Oh, call my name. that's funny. I was like, I was I thinking thought... you were <laughs> having technical difficulties. We're up, we're patient. We got oh. long noses here. <laughs> okay, so I just had a question. Of course, I'm, I'm new to Taurus, so I'm just like learning. So when you talk about the 10 Northern Triumph, is that Ephraim and Manasseh? Yes. So it's actually just a, okay. So the leader of it was Ephraim. So in Hebrew, it's called Ephraim. And some guy chided me, that guy that's on every post, Carissa was arguing with him today. She's like, why don't you just block her? Yes, please block me. But that's okay. Whatever. But he doesn't know is he's building up more judgment. Anyway, he was all mad at me saying Ephraim I said that's in Hebrew how you pronounce it he goes well we're English speakers and you're going in and out of Hebrew that was his next thing I was like oh my gosh I don't care how you say Ephraim or whatever but if you want to know in Hebrew it's using Ephraim um I have a video on it Marisol I would like you to watch are you do we talk on Facebook or just Instagram because I have it's on Instagram and I think I did watch it. I probably just need to watch it again because I remember you sent it um mm, but uh, okay and so Ephraim and Manasseh, but it's all considered Israel, even Judah or is Judah, is it Judah, Israel, and then like Israel is Manasseh. Okay, so Israel was Jacob's name became Israel. So he had all the sons of Israel, all the sons of Jacob, okay? Then we have a division in the kingdom of Israel, Ephraim, the first leader was from Ephraim, and Judah. 
of okay. the Jews. It's not yeah. wrong to say Jew. Jews are Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and then Ephraim. Okay. In the book of Ezekiel, what it says is um, he's, Yeshua is going to join the stick of Ephraim and the sons of Israel with him and the sons of Judah and the Israelites with him. So Israel can always refer to Jew or Gentile, both or either. And I said Gentile, they're meaning Ephraim because Ephraim became the fullness of the Gentiles. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just but then I just get confused because so Manasseh and Ephraim, that was J uh, not Jacob's, but Joseph's kids. Yes, they're Joseph's two sons. And so because the firstborn and Joseph got the firstborn inheritance because he was sold by his brothers and because of what happened to him, he got the firstborn inheritance, which he got a double portion. So when you had three children, you divided your inheritance into four parts. The oldest got two of the parts. And so the 12 tribes got divided into 13 portions because two were given to the firstborn. We're having like a hurricane out here. I don't know if you guys can hear it. The wind, that's why I looked over here a little bit ago. I prayed for rain very hard. Praise Yahweh. But I mean, it's like we got like the wind, the windows are shaking. We got the thunder cracking. So that was from you, the sound? It's all this. Yeah, we got a huge storm right here. No, the wind, I that was somebody's phone. I heard that. But um uh -huh. outside. We're just getting some rain, praise Yahweh, because we was, we was hot. Melly can't handle it over 70 degrees, and I was about dying. But like I said, anyway, okay, those are great questions. Um, I want to get through 31 at least, because 31 is really good. It's if you have to memorize Jeremiah 31, this will be your model for the rest of your life, because they're going to say, prepare to the new covenant. Well, let's read what the new covenant is. And then you'll read it to them. They're like, no, nope, we're into the new covenant. I'm like, did you? Wait a minute, did you just hear what the new covenant is? Because the new covenant is the same set of laws with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It's like, I don't know. They'll just be a little, 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 you know. I need Seth to make a meme on that. Okay. Who wants to read chapter 31? I can read. Awesome. Go ahead. At the same time, says Yahweh, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. You wait a minute. Says, I just want to stop on that. Wait a minute. I just point these things out for you guys to share with Christians and people who are struggling. Christians say that they, they replace the Israelites as God's people. God just said the time of Jacob's trouble is for Israel, and that after the tribulation, because they go through the time of Jacob's trouble, they're his people with his son David, that's Yeshua, the, his King David, not his son, it doesn't say there. And then he says, you're going to be my people. So the church replaced Israel, but then at this point, does the Gentiles get kicked off again? And like what he gets rid of that harlot and comes back? No, church didn't replace Israel. God never sent away Israel like in that capacity. He was always had a plan to bring them back. I just want you to just remember all this stuff, how it goes together. Okay. Thus says Yahweh, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness, Israel, when I went to give him rest. The uh, Yahweh has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be rebuilt. O virgin of Israel, you shall again be adorned with your tambourines, and shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. You shall yet plant vines on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and eat them as ordinary food. For there shall be a day when the watchmen will cry on Mount Ephraim, Arise, and let us go up to Zion, to Yahweh our God. For thus says Yahweh, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel, the Behold. remnant, the remnant, the remnant. Most of Israel is going to reject the truth. There's a remnant. Think about a remnant. The remnant is the little part that's left. You know why all the Christians are fighting? Because they're not part of the remnant. You're listening because you're part of the remnant. Dale. 
I got a question here. I was looking uh, in this uh, verse five there. It says, eat them as ordinary food. And I looked at the footnote that I have and it says, treat them as common. My understanding of common, that's not a good thing. So is this some mm -hmm. kind of rebuke going on? This is talking about like, you remember what it says, like even the, um, it, it talks about in, is at the end of Jeremiah, where it talks about, no, maybe it was Zech Zechariah. I'm trying to think of the book. I'm a little tired, but I'm since 3.30. It talks about even like the bowls, that any every bowl will be holy. And so I think this is kind of the opposite of that saying like, like, it's going to be good. Like it's, you don't have to save it for a special occasion. You can just eat it. It doesn't have to be just like, you're going to eat it so abundantly. It's just going to be normal for you. I think this is what he's talking about, like more normal. Like you don't have to save it for a special thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's what it's, it's talking about. Cause there's like, you're just, it's going to be more of like a, a normal thing. Cause you're going to be so blessed. He's going to bless them. The, the vineyards are going to be just abundant. Okay. So it's not common as in when clean and unclean come. Right. Up. Let's here, let me look at, let's do this. Let's get the BLB up here. Okay. Let me do this really fast. So you won't see my face. Well, you'll see my face. I won't see your faces. Oh, I just see that Krista had a little boy there. Okay. BLB. Sorry, blbclassic.org. Let me go here and just quickly look at that verse, Dale, because we'll look at really fast. So Jeremiah 31, we're in verse five, right? Yeah. Okay. So if we look at first, um, in the Hebrew, the word common there um, is halal. And so it, it's just talking about not def oh it's saying that is interesting okay let's go back and read this in the hebrew that's a good question he has so you shall yet plant vines upon the mountains of samaria the planters shall plant and eat them as common so they eat them like as they would do a defile thing dale that's a really good question we should look into that more because what is it saying here it's saying old, okay, old TT. Huh, that's good. I don't, you know what? I had not parsed that verse apart. That's our job now. Because it really is the word there for defiled. It is the same word as defiled. And why would he be saying to us, you guys tell me your opinion, what you think. Can you hear the storm out here? Like we're in like a hurricane. Apparently, it can be heard on the Facebook Live, but I can't hear it on the Zoom. I'm just thankful for the rain, and I'm also thankful that the rodeo, the people breaking the rodeos tonight, are being shown not to do that. We prayed that Yahweh would make his word convicting people, and it's, now they know. Go home. Don't break. Don't go to the rodeo on Sabbath. Yeah, the reason that triggered for me was because in my study with the uh, kosher laws and arguing people, when Peter's vision, it says unclean or common. So I looked mm -hmm. into that, and it means that when an unclean creature comes in contact with a clean creature, it becomes common, defiled, it cannot be eaten. Right. So then when I looked at that footnote, I went, wait a minute, is this a rebuke or what? Right, and I haven't looked at this one before. So you shall yet plant vines in the mountains of Samaria. This is a blessing. The planters shall plant and eat well, and it literally says, treat them as common, treat them as defiled. And I'm wondering if it's saying you're going to treat them with contempt. Here's what the Lord just spoke to me. Okay, here's what he said. He said, Mel, you know, when something is, you have an abundance of something, you almost don't like, you're just like, I have too much, you kind of throw it away, you discard it. He said, they're going to have so many vines. They're going to have so much abundance that it's going to be treated like almost like they don't want it anymore. They have too much. It's like, like you can just be wasteful, so to speak. That makes sense to me. In Spanish, there's a word for that. Like when you just can't have too much more of it, it's like repugna. It means it's like it's repugnant. You can't have no more of it. Yes, yes. And that's what he told me. He was like, he's like, Melly, it's going to be like so con like so much that it's like they're going to be like almost like you would throw away defiled things. And, and those of you like, okay, I'll harvest sometimes like 3,600 pounds of tomatoes. At the end, I'm wanting to like vomit tomatoes. Like I'm done. I'm done. Whoever wants to come. One, one, I remember like a couple of years ago, I was like, Jenna Morgan, I'm like, come out. They caught like 300 pounds of tomatoes. I'm like, I can't do any more tomatoes. I cannot can another tomato. Come get them. 
and I weigh my tomatoes. That's how I know. I think that year was 2,400 pounds. That's just a lot of tomatoes. And it's that abundance where you're just like getting rid of it. And that's what he spoke to me in that moment. He was like, you're just like, it's like, they're going to be so blessed that you just like, almost like, oh, get rid of it. I don't need any more. Well, here in this one, I know you don't like this one, but in uh, the uh, complete Jewish Bible, it says, and, uh, and, and those doing the planting will have the use of its fruit. Right. And of course, leave it to David Stern to twist it to that, because it literally is in the Hebrew we just read. I, I have that Bible, so I'm, like, I'm not like against it. It's just such a bad translation because you look at, we just read it the Hebrew and the Hebrew really is, this is a defiled thing. This is a common thing. Yeah. Well, that's good. That was a good catch, Dale. I'm glad you brought that up. And those are the things I want you guys to bring up because I'm not going to see everything. We can go through it together. Okay. Someone is Someone is asking if you're okay during the storm. Oh, I'm not scared of storms. I'd go out in it right now. I love the rain. I'm not scared of anything. I have Yave. And if anything gets hurt, then it was of him. I, I just like, you have, I have to live my life. Like if anything touches me, Yave allowed it. Like, then I have to be like, okay, daddy, teach me. But thank you for caring. I do thank you guys for caring. I literally just have like no fear. I don't know. I fear of Yahweh, like I respectful fear of him, but I don't get like, I have to be careful. Like, remember how we have to be patient with people who don't see what we see. I have to be patient with people who have fear because I'm just like, come on. Like we got God on our side. Like, like, come on, who cares that that's Goliath's like 15,000 feet taller than me. I can just bite his pinky toe and he'll fall over. I mean, you know, it's just whatever. I need, I want you all to have that faith in your Yahweh. Okay, we can keep reading. Verse eight, behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them. Are you on the end of the earth? That's figurative. Pointing it out. Figurative, figurative, figurative. Okay, please just bear with me. Among them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and the one who labors with child together, a great throng shall return there. They shall come weeping, and with supplications I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters, in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O nations. And declare it in the isles afar off and say, he who scattered Israel will gather him. And Does Yahweh's him word come true? Does Yahweh's word come true? He who scatters Israel will gather him. Are we coming back? Oh, you better believe it, baby. And keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For Yahweh has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of one stronger than he. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, streaming to the goodness of Yahweh, for wheat and new wine and oil, for the young of the flock and the herd. Their soul shall be like a well-watered well garden, and they shall sorrow no more, no more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning to joy will comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priest with abundance and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, a voice was heard in Rama, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Okay, so Thus Rachel says Yahweh. the mother of Joseph. Joseph was the father of Ephraim and Manasseh. So when we talk about Rachel's children, if you have dreams about a Rachel, oftentimes you're being told about Israel, Ephraim, the 10 tribes. Uh, if you so, so those are things for you guys to analyze when you have dreams. A Rachel represents typically the mother church, Israel, the harlot. Remember, and Rachel was a harlot. Rachel hid the idols of her father under her. Cassandra. I could be wrong, but isn't this the verse, verse 15, that gets referenced 
don't remember which gospel talking about when mm. um Herod kills the two-year-old and younger the word is alive and active you remember how you you'll I'll, god will open you in your bible to a passage and you know he's speaking to you and it has nothing to do that it, it was not written for that moment but it was written for that moment does that make sense like i'll open <laughs> danielle and i were talking the other day and i'm like i just opened twice to come before winter like had nothing to do with her it's talking about something else like paul but we knew in that moment yeah i was speaking to us through that word um and so that's what was happening there. They understood the father was speaking to the spirit was speaking to them. Oh, Rachel's losing her. Right. Because the children now were those technically even Rachel's children's. Nope. Those were Leah's children's, right? They were Jews. So you get, you get that whole thing there. But a lot of times the new Testament will, do you see that lightning? will um, will take a, a scripture and use it in a way that is applicable and alive and active. But that's a great question. Okay, verse 16. Thus says Yahweh, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says Yahweh, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says Yahweh, that your children shall come back to their own border. Hey, I have so surely heard... Being listen to this you guys are all crying and you're tired and you're giving up already it's just after a couple months or two years or whatever it is you're already getting fatigued no 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 no. stop your work's going to be rewarded get out there and torah vomit everywhere huh. word vomit everywhere you go sow the seed everywhere your work's going to be rewarded your work's going to be rewarded okay I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself. You have chastised me and I was chastised like an untrained bull. Restore me and I will return for you are the, you are Yahweh, my God. Surely after my turning, I repented. And after I was instructed, I struck myself on the thigh. I was ashamed. Yes, even humiliated before or because I bore the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For though I spoke against him, I earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, says Yahweh. Set up signposts, make landmarks, set your heart toward the highway, the way in which you went. Turn back, O virgin of Israel. Turn back to these, your cities. How long will you gad about, O you backsliding daughter? For Yahweh has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall encompass a man. You stop that verse is critical a new thing in the earth a woman shall encompass a man i said father what does that mean because i know surely you're not going to put a man like the woman is the head of the home and he showed me a vision and he told me he said mel in the garden hava eve was the one through which sin entered and she is the one who caused the man to lose the right to eat of the tree of life. He said, I will use the woman now to bring back the right to eat of the tree of life. He says, in most relationships, the woman is going to come to the Torah first. And then he showed me a vision. I said, well, show me what this looks like because I know I'm not the head of the home. And in the dream, the vision I saw my husband in front of me and I was behind him with my head bowed, my arms around him and I, my hands were over his heart. And he said, you women are to pray your husbands into the kingdom. You are to cover them and surround them and teach them. And I was behind him. Interesting, Isaiah says, your teacher shall be behind you. And so what he told me, he says, I'm redeeming the woman because she's the one who brought the sin and caused them to lose the right to eat of the tree of life through disobedience to God's commandments. They could no longer eat the tree, eat the tree of life. But Revelation 22, 14 says, Revelation 22, 14 says, blessed are those who keep the commandments of God that they might have the right to eat of the tree of life. And in 99% of the cases, women are coming to Torah obedience first. So do not think you can leave that husband. 
I'm so sick and tired of these Torah terrorist women. Jezebel spirits who'd say every man's a narcissist, leave him. You are losing your calling and you have forgotten your calling and you are a wicked, selfish, selfless person forgetting the depths and the sin from which you've been forgiven. We were called for such a moment as this. Not every man is a narcissist. In fact, 90% of my counseling sessions, it's the woman. We think we're such victims. Get over ourselves. We do not get to emotionally manipulate people. We do not get to be the queens of the house. We do not get to be the queens who our husbands have to lick our feet, and, you know, and kiss our butts. That is not how life works. We were simply created to be the helper of our husband. Doesn't make us stupid. It doesn't make us dumb. Right now. We have been put in the marriages we have been put. Unless that man leaves of his volition, then we are freed or he dies like Abigail's husband, Nabal. We are there. We are faithful. We are praying and we remember the savior on the cross who died for our sins, which are way worse than anybody's doing to us. We do not get to call them names, be mean to them, be angry at them, be bitter. We are to treat them like our Savior treated us. We are to love them into the kingdom of heaven. We are to be patient and kind and merciful. And is it easy? No. Nope. Nope. And those of you who think I don't understand, guess again. All of us know. But what I remember is that I'm a handful for God. What I remember is that I have a long way to go. What I remember is who the heck am I to get frustrated at somebody and unforgiving to somebody for what I think they're doing wrong to me? Who am I? Who am I? So I don't get to walk out when it's inconvenient. I don't get to walk out if... Oh, God forbid he would treat me like a narcissist. Being, I'm, everybody has a narcissistic moment. Everybody. Usually the people claiming, or anyway. Everybody has messed up. Right now, you women are probably in marriages that are unequally yoked. And your husband does not see what you see. But you have put there for such a time as this. You fast, you pray, you hit your knees, you share, you be kind, you serve. You treat him like a king and you love. You practice serving him like you do your Messiah. It's not always easy. Do I mess up? Yes. We all mess up. Especially when the demons are real strong. And there's a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, a lot of name calling, a lot of accusations, a lot of manipulation. See, just like men, women emotionally manipulate men sometimes and it's sick. It's not okay. But I will tell you, men can emotionally bully women. And it's not okay either. Two wrongs don't make a right. Takes two to tango. You're going to have to learn to keep your mouth shut. You're going to have to learn to tame your tongue. You're going to have to learn to turn the other cheek. You're going to have to learn to say, I love you. I'm going to choose God. Make your choice. You're going to have to say, I'm not engaging right now. We're not going to fight. I love you. I respect you, but I will never obey you over my, my God. You can say in the moments when you're supposed to speak, hey, have you read this Bible verse? You're going to get argued with. You're going to have to use this as your refinement. This is your refinement time. You want to be the bride of Messiah? You want to be like him? You better go through this. You better not run. It's not easy. Sean. Oh, um, I was going to ask this. Uh, thank you. That was wonderful, by the way. Um, the um, the verse 22 that you were just reading about the women in, shall encompass a man. Um, is Does this have anything to do with, um, I've been looking for this verse, by the way. Um, does it have anything to do with the second Exodus, this part? Yes, this is now. This is now. So in around the year, 
Well, I think Bachi Wooten wrote her book in 1989, 1988, right in there, The Two Houses of Israel. She was the first one that we know of that really God used to awaken to the understanding of the two houses of Israel. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, then a lot of us began hearing this exact chapter is the chapter the day after I went into anaphylactic allergic reaction and started my 40 day induced fast from Yahweh. He said, this is you. He said, read this. He opened me. I said, Lord, give me a word. Give me a word. He uh, let me hear. And he kept t- telling me about Ephraim, this hard part here where he struck his thigh. And he, and he said, Mel, that's you. I said, what is Ephraim? I don't even know who that is. He said, look it up. He said, and he, and I looked it up and it said, Israel. He said, you're Israel. And I was like, I'm like a German. We're just Gentiles. My family was Jewish. I had no idea. My aunt Lizzie knew. My dad knew. My grandma knew. She was called. I didn't know. So here's God telling me this chapter was used mightily with me. This awoken me. Cause then I like, was like all for 40 days. All I kept thinking is this word of Frime and kept hearing about a Frime and he kept telling me he's going to rebuild. And I'm like, you're rebuilding me. You're rebuilding the Frime. I don't understand what you're telling me. And then right after it was done, I started the 13 days with no food and then I came to Torah obedience. And so, um, did that make, did I answer your question, Sean, or did you have more? Did I get on a side tangent there? Yeah, um, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, I have another question, follow-up question on that, because you mentioned something about you being German or something like that. Um, Father has shown, uh, revealed to me that I'm a Levite, but I'm an a- I'm Asian descent. So how can an Asian be a uh, Levite? The, the sons of Israel went everywhere. My family were Kohen. Our last name was K-O-H-E-N. And so... It was a little box elder bug. Sorry, did you see that like fly at me? Um, so my family just had the history books. And so any like the the seed of Abraham went everywhere. The tribes went everywhere. Um and so it, anything's possible. Like I see. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like the children of Israel were scattered everywhere. So it very it's possible that in your lineage there that there could have been somebody from the tribe of Levi who had intermarried, if that's what Yahweh told you. Because it's the one tribe you can't be grafted into. <laughs> if you read in scripture, right. you can choose any tribe except that one. Um, that's the one you don't get to choose. And um, so yeah, right. that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Cass. Okay. Um, two things. Wasn't there Levites in all 12 or 13 tribes? So if the Northern 10 got scattered, there would have been Levites that scattered amongst them. So that could explain how Levite got to Asia. Exactly. They're everywhere. And any tribe could have been anywhere. And the Levites, we were dispersed. So was Simeon. Simeon was dispersed throughout some of the tribes. Um, like my family came over during the Bolshevik revolution. So we, I think we were, we didn't go during the first Exodus by the looks of my family history, because we knew we were Jewish and they knew they were Jewish and they were called Jews. So those tend to be people that went after the 10 Northern tribes were scattered. But Yahweh used this section with me just to understand the the, the return of Israel. Um, but you're right, Cass, because all of us were given, like the Israelites were given land in every tribe. And so the thing is, is most likely all of you on here are actually blood Levites. And you know, want to know what? We all come back to Noah. We all are brothers and sisters. See, that's what people forget. Like it doesn't go back to Adam. It goes back to Noah. <laughs> like it goes back to Adam. But it, like if you have an argument about Noah, because people do, they get, well, they start arguing. Then we all go back to Noah. Like there's, there's no question about that. You know, I have this theory that I just mentioned in the chat um, that um, my last teacher was also a Levite as well. And when father showed me that I was a Levite, I, I I started to believe that father would put people into the same tribe together because father doesn't mix things up. You know, he he keep things very organized, very. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if you all are the Levite as well. Just just as a thought. Oh, I am. A, my family is Levites. No, I'm talking oh. about everyone here in this group here. Mm, I don't wondering. think so. I wouldn't think so because I would think as everybody's coming, um, I would think all the different tribes are being called. Usually you marry with the same tribe. I'm quite convinced my husband's Levite. His family is, has a history of pastors. Like you accidentally, you accidentally what? did. 
sorry, you accidentally did say that um, you thought everyone here was Levites. You meant Israelites. Israelites, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah, no, everybody's an Israelite. I don't think everybody's a Levite. I think everybody's, it's all the 12 tribes. Um, Somebody did say something, which author wrote on the two houses, Romaine asked that. That's um, Batya Wooten. Please do not listen to all her writings or teachings. I wouldn't even read her book. I was told by God not to read her book. I read the Bible. I'm going to tell you, though, that she wrote a book and she was talking about the two houses of Israel. I'm going to encourage you what the father told me not to read the book. I read the book that talks about it. So just my encouragement to you. Cassandra again. There's a couple. There's some there's questions coming in now. Um, so I am and I'm telling this lady, I apologize if I'm misunderstanding her question. But I think she's pretty much asking the question that you did already answer about how um, mm. scripture can be about that thing, but also speak to you in a personal way. Right. And we did talk about that. So I think we answered that. If not, they can ask again. Um, and then someone is asking, is there a difference between Germanic Jews and the tribe of Judah? Well, yes, because Judah were Judah, Benjamin and Levi. We have the Ashkenazi and the Sephardic Jews. Do not believe the black Israelis when they start talking crap about this. They literally went through Northern Europe or Southern Europe. And we have different dialectical differences. The Jews just kind of went through different areas. Okay. Now, um, there's Jews who from Judah, Jews from Benjamin, Jews from Levi. That's the, that's like an overriding Jew. C-O-H-E-N and K-O-H-E-N were the usually the tribe of Levi because that's the word for priest in Hebrew. My family was K-O-H-E-N. Some people I have heard in their studies say that's the tribe of Aaron. I don't know. That will only be for Yahweh to, to announce because people are like, which part of Aaron you're from or which part of Levi you're from? Who knows? I've often wondered because father told me years ago, I don't say this bragging, but I have, I'm just speaking truth. He told me I would be like Moses. And I've often thought if Moses was my grandfather, because I'll, he'll, he'll tell me like, you hear, like, I talk to you, you're going to be like Moses. He told me from 2002, you're going to be like Moses and lead the people out of Egypt. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And I just, I always take it symbolic, like just with my little group, my family, but then some big, some Things have happened and prophecies. I've had a lot of dreams. And then this last six months, like people from around the world have come forward with some more things to confirm what God's been showing me. So I don't know. The point is you're all going to have a calling on your life. It doesn't make us anything great. Like I'm nothing. Like I understood that when he's, I never even felt like important when he said that. All I thought was, oh, okay. Then I'm just supposed to help people get out of Egypt. Just like you guys are supposed to be like Moses and help him get out of Egypt too. Like to me, it's like, it doesn't make me better or anything. It's just, we all have that calling on our life, but there will be a specific calling on your life too. That sometimes is like a little different, but I know he told me my life would be like Jeremiah and I'd be hated, but that's a, like I was telling you guys, this is your life. Right. And so we got to remember that none of us are special. Like I'm not special. Like we got to remember that, like we're all having the same thing <laughs> like Yahweh loves us all um and we're coming out so back to this main question german jews could be from any of the tribes they were just jews from, from the had settled in germany the, there was tons of levites in germany i mean did you know that all of the major nuclear missiles and um all the major war Tools were created by Levites. Did you know that? <laughs> Every single, like of the really big, like the atomic bomb, all these things were created by Levites. And some of those were German. Interesting? Coincidental? I don't think so. I Because Levites were his sons of indignation, right? Levites were zealous and they were blessed for being zealous. Jacob got mad because of Jacob's fear. Remember, go listen to the podcast. Jacob was a coward in that moment and he feared, but Moses through Moses from Yahweh blessed Levi for the zealousness and strewing the people who had done wrong. Jacob's like, you made me reproach to the people. And they're like, we like they raped our sister. And Moses is like, yeah, you're going to get blessed for that. 
heaven. Hi. Uh, so I guess my question, I also kind of like my grandmother's father was German. And um, I also went back in my my dad's family, like back as far as I could go and like have ancestor Moshe who got, who came. that was the farthest I could go. But, yeah, um, most likely you're Jewish. Your, your husband's Jewish. So most likely you're Jewish. Yeah, they probably put you guys together because you're both Jewish. Yeah, so my husband, he's from the tribe of Levi. But I wanted to say before uh, for the other guy that, um, forget his name on there, but my my husband's grandfather had a different wife like in Vietnam. And so he had a child with her. So like, yeah, there's Levites everywhere. They're but eternity was one <laughs> Yeah. Um, attorney was wondering, uh, because like we're like she's a child outside. Would she be from a tribe of Levi too? Because I married Ryan. Oh, uh, it, it's gonna come question. through your blood. She could be. I mean, he would take care of her because it's because Ryan's not her father. Um, but you know, Yave knows her blood lineage, and I don't know if you know her father's background at all but you know like you're probably jewish of some sort so i don't think it would go through it's definitely not her blood's not going to come through ryan at that point okay yeah i know i was just wondering like the graph stay together like in the kingdom oh. or not <laughs> yeah yavi's not going to separate families well you you know here you go over there you don't get to live with your husband <laughs> I did tell my husband though that I'm not leaving Yeshua. So I said, you want because he wants to live when we go back. He goes, I just want, I want to like live on the Mediterranean when we go back. I said, well, I'm just living with Yeshua. So we might not have to be married in the millennial kingdom. I don't know. Or we have to be long distance relationship because I'm not leaving Yeshua. I'm like, after all this time, no way. <laughs> Joking, I'll go wherever my husband goes. But I'm like, yeah, they just move his heart to want to be right by you because I want to be right by you. <laughs> I don't want to like, I don't want to have to like run because I'm a, I practice running long distance because I want to be able to run all around Israel. I think that'd be fun just to run everywhere. I want to be one of the runners. I said, Lord, can I just be one of the runners? I like that. <laughs> it's fun to think about for sure. <laughs> so loud. Awesome. Okay. Now let's get to the most important part of not the most important, one of the most beautiful parts of 31. Starting in verse 23. Let's go, Jeanette. Sorry. Okay. Thus says yes, Yahweh just of hosts. But... Okay. Uh, thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, they shall again use this speech in the land of Judah and in its cities when I bring back their captivity. Yahweh bless you, O home of justice and mountain of holiness, and there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all its cities together, farmers and those going out with flocks, for I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. After this, I woke and looked around, and my sleep was sweet to me. Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and the seed of beasts. And it shall come to pass that as I have watched over them to pluck up, to break down, to throw down, to destroy and to afflict, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says Yahweh. In stop. those days, they shall. If you are, stop. If you're afflicted, and we've heard twice now tonight that Yahweh afflicts us. Yahweh is the one this comes from. Do you really think you should fight him? Or should you hit your knees and humble yourself before him and say, okay, daddy, I'm listening. Because. I don't want to fight that spanking. I want to submit. He afflicted us. He lets it. Any punishment, anything that touches us is from him. He allows it. I'm not fighting. Sometimes I want to fight. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I don't want to go through the things I'm going through. But we need to submit. Oh my gosh, the snoring has started. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, verse 29, in those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man who eats the sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days yeah, I'm gonna are I'm going to stop coming. you, Jeanette. 
I'm going to read this because I'm going to interrupt it too much. Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. In the Hebrew, I will make a Brit Chadasha. Chadasha is renewed covenant. Covenant. Oh, one second here, guys. My face. Sorry, I didn't realize I had unplugged my phone. If the battery dies, I'm so sorry. Shoot. I'm so sorry, guys, that the battery, I didn't realize I kicked it off and unplugged it. If anybody's on the live, is it still there? Do you see the live still? Yeah. It's still here. Well, it just lost signal. Give me a second. Let me go back in. Okay. It's sorry. It's still going. That. Okay, it's live. Okay. I totally messed up and kicked the charger off, and then it's like no battery almost. Okay. I want to point out. The word new there is renewed. And if you want proof, please go to, I think it's 1 Samuel 11. We'll look together. I promise you. I just got to remember which chapter it is, but I think it's 1 Samuel 11. Might be. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right here in verse 14. Then Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. That word is the same exact word as for the new covenant. And what did they say? Renew it. They already made a covenant with Saul. They're renewing it again. So in Hebrew, there's no such word as new. I promise you. You will get English speakers who have no understanding of the Hebrew language argue with you on this. Good Christians know Hebrew, but they don't know Hebrew. So irritating. They will say, that word means new. No, this is why in Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiasticus, we don't like Ecclesiasticus, we like Ecclesiastes. This is why it says there's nothing new under the sun. Because what has happened will be again. In the Hebrew mindset, everything comes and goes and ebbs and flows, and it's not linear. It's not a singular event. I can, just like the disciples used verses to apply to their situations, that same verse will be used to apply to you. It's because the word is alive and active, not linear. So we they renewed the covenant with Saul. It was the same covenant. They did it again. In Jeremiah 31, verse 1, the days are coming when I will make a renewed covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, the Gentiles are grafted in, but they become Israel or Judah. Cass, I'm going to finish this and I'll get your question. Not according to the covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. And um, after those days. Where do the Gentiles get that this applies to them if they're trying to separate themselves from Israel? Dude, you don't get the new covenant if you don't claim to Israel. If you choose your identity is not to be Israel, then you don't get the new covenant. Like, get out of here. This new covenant is for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And any Gentile can become part of Israel. But you do not get this covenant. You do not get it if you say you're not part of Israel. Okay, I will put, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. Bruh, the renewed covenant is the same laws as the word Torah. And where is it written? Oh, right. It was done. It was on the cross. It's done. No. Now that law is written on your heart and your mind. And I will be their God. Once again, we just read it three times in these tonight. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Part of the marriage ceremony with God is keeping his commandments. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brothers. This isn't saying there's not, you're not going to. This is saying that all of you are convicted by the Holy Spirit 
people will say that we still have teachers. We're not under the new covenant. Oh my gosh. Literacy failure again. It literally said in the book of Isaiah, we're going to have teachers behind us seeing this is the way of walking. What this is meaning in a metaphoric way is that you all have the Holy Spirit. You all are to rise up and live according to God. Of course, there's people with the gift of prophecy and, and teaching and, and, and whatever. People will twist any scripture out of context if they can and try to make it just a literal thing. Okay, so I will be their God. They shall be, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother say, no, Yahweh, for they shall all know me. It's talking about like the Holy Spirit is going to be in everybody who believes. From the least of them to the greatest of them says, Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Thus says Yahweh, who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who disturbs the sea and its waves roar. Yahweh Sebaoth is his name. If those, listen, if those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. If the ordinances with the moon and sun and stars disappear, then you can break his covenant with Israel. Did the church replace Israel? Heck no. Can you break God's covenant with the sun, moon, and stars? No. This is the verse you use for dispensationalists. Say, um, it says you can't cast us off for all we've done. You can't break his covenant with the house of Israel. Thus says Yahweh, if heaven above can be earth measured on a flat earth, it could be measured. It's not flat and you can't measure it. If heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath. That's just talking about um, below the earth's crust. It doesn't have to be like a square or anything weird. I, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all they have done, says Yahweh. Did they sin enough to get cast off? This verse is pivotal. If heaven above can be measured, which it can't, and the foundations of the earth, so those bottom of the seas underneath the earth's crust there, if you can search out the foundations of the earth beneath, then he'll cast off the seed of Israel for all they have done. He says, I know they're, I know they're poop heads. I know they suck. But I ain't casting them off for all they've done. Behold, the days are coming, says Yahweh, that the city shall be built for Yahweh from the Tower of Hananel to the corner gate. The surveyor's line shall also extend straight forward over the hill Gareb. Then it shall turn towards Goath. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields as far as the brook Kadon to the corner of the horse gate toward the east shall be holy to Yahweh. It shall not be plucked up or thrown down anymore forever. This should be your mantra chapter. When you're talking about the new covenant, and who is Israel? Tribulation. Do you see how much is in this one chapter? Time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, Cass, now. Two things. First, what chapter and verse was the renewed, the word renewed in First Samuel? First Samuel 11. Um, verse, were, I think, 14. 13? 14. 14. Um, and Billy and I were just thinking about how interesting it is that NASA and just the science community as a whole tries to measure out the heavens and destroy like they shoot rockets to the moon and measure out all the earth and things like that yeah they constantly have satellites and stuff out there trying to measure it and and making telescopes not gonna happen yeah he was saying that's a uh, satan trying to break the covenant right and then you know what? The universe is expanding. Did you know that astrophysics, creation astrophysics, literally have proven you can see, the Bible talks about the as the heavens stretch out. Did you know that literally currently the universe is expanding? That wouldn't happen on a flat earth. Like they literally can calculate that and show it. Amazing. Okay, Sean, and we're probably not going to be too much longer because it's two o'clock for Cassandra, one o'clock for some of you in the middle there. Midnight. Hi, 
sorry. Um, I, I always thought that, the, um, you know, the part where um, it said that no more shall every man teach his neighbor and all that. Um, I always thought that was like, you know, how, how in the thousand year, you know, when we get, you, you know, that's what I thought it was. You know what I mean? It's so in not. other words, it happened. The new covenant okay. began, Yeshua says it. This is the new covenant when he broke the bread and drank the wine. It was us okay. partaking with him and getting that Holy Spirit. At that moment, we still had teachers. Paul talks about those with the gift of teaching. All this talking about, because even in the millennial kingdom, we still have priests. It says we're still going to go to the temple. It shows the priesthood still put in place through all the millennial kingdom. That's Ezekiel 40 to the end, specifically 44, 45, and 46. Okay. What this is saying is you're going to know me. All of you, if you get, if you come to me, you get the Holy Spirit. That's a beautiful thing. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I'm wondering all the rain, all the storm stuff. I want to go outside and look. I'm interested now to see if we, what we got. I hope not hail. I don't think it was hail. But questions, just let's do a few questions. And then. Lorenzo has a question. I only charge $5 for you, Lorenzo. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going to go work it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had a question. So right here in Jeremiah, it shows where they were going to be, the at least the Jews were going to be scattered for 70 years. Where where does it give that um the 2,730 for, for the northern tribes to be scattered? Ezekiel chapter four says that um, Ezekiel was to lay on his side for 390 days. You take that times the seven times of punishment from the book of Leviticus and the curses. 390 times seven is 2,730. And right around the year 2000, we were all being told we were fine. I opened to that. Not all the people that woke up at that time. The kind of the first wave was like, all of a sudden we were all here and we were fine. We were fine. We were fine. I had another, I had a lady, very similar story to mine, but it was just like amazing. Cause like people, I had a friend from New Zealand and Amsterdam and they were all like, we were all like, we were just told we were fine. Like out of the blue. I said, that was me. I was like reading Jeremiah 31 and God's like, that's you. I'm like, I don't know what a Fryam means. I've never seen that word before in my life. I knew John 3 16. I told you that, but did that make, did that answer your question? Lorenzo is Ezekiel 4. And you take it the days times seven is times the seven times punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Thanks. Oh, goodness. I need to stop yawning. I've been up since 3.30. So I am probably going to, because I got to bed at midnight last night and up at 3.30. I'm a little tired, which is why I knew the Lord told me not to schedule a teaching on Saturday. He said, you can't do it this week. I'm like, okay, now I see why. Because my fried brain is tired and loopy. Okay, Cass, I think Lorenzo, Lorenzo was done. He just forgot to put his hand down. Um, I tell you. Where is this? Uh, um, I can't remember now if you have a specific teaching on this, but someone said that, they, that you lost them when you started to explain um, the renewing of the covenant. And they're asking if you have a specific um, video or teaching on YouTube or Facebook about that. I can't remember if you do or not. I don't, think I don't I, know if the I two houses have reels Israel. on it. I, I don't know if I have, I mean, I have reels, but I can never find the reels. Um, you can just go through the reels under my page. What it means, we have to remember is that God made a covenant with Israel. And so when you renew your marriage vows, that's exactly what happened. He didn't go get different people. He didn't get a new subset of people to make this covenant with. He didn't say, I'm going to do it with the Gentiles. I'm going to do it with the Spanish. I'm going to, no, he said, I'm going to do it with Israel. And I said, here's this thing, the covenant I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to make a new covenant, but the word in Hebrew there is renewed covenant. I'm going to renew my marriage vows with them. And this is what I'm going to do. It's going to be a little different this time. Not only are you going to follow like you're going to follow the law. It's not like the same where you just have to have a checklist and just read it. Oh, sorry. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And Ezekiel 36 says that Holy Spirit's going to write those laws in our hearts and minds. Jeremiah 31, we just read it, says that, that the new covenant is going to write the law on our minds and our heart. 
And Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10 quotes that. And so that's what it means to have the renewed covenant. Same set of people. It's just a renewal of the wedding vows. And this time it became more stringent. The law didn't go away. The law became more, became, became harder. Now you have to like not even lust for another woman. Like you need to understand what the heart of the Torah was. Billy, he's tired. Uh, yeah, it's, what is it? It's like, I think, where, where is uh, Cassandra, or Cassandra where, where do you, where do you live? I am in Orlando, Florida. Oh, okay. So it's the same time over there too. Um, I'm just curious. Um, I was just going to say that, you know, when Yeshua says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will manifest myself to you. Like, you know, how Yeshua also says uh, that if um, nobody can come to me unless the father draws him. Is there like, you know, I asked you this today about um, uh, the new patch, like in the old patch with the new wine and fasting um, that. uh if you're being like wooed in by the by the father to Yeshua, is it like I don't know how how to describe it, but it's like if you're coming into covenant with him by keeping his commandments, obviously that's only by his his grace that he's allowing you to do that. So at what point does that like? I guess you could say it's almost like a like you know when you consummate a marriage, or I, I don't know how you would say that, but you know. Born again, I I don't I don't know. I, I'm like I think I think really too deep sometimes, but you know, <laughs> that was uh that was something I thought about. Well, I think yeah, I think it is great. It's like that obedience to the Torah is like the consummation of the marriage, like it's the agree marriage agreement. And then when you get the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit like is that consummation. It's like okay, I'm literally I'm putting myself in you, <laughs> like because He is the Word of God. He is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Like the Torah, when it comes in, it's like a part of God in us. So those people who deny that are denying the very essence of God within them. Like the very nature of God is obedient to the Torah. Like he, the, the Torah is about him. Like it shows us his holiness. If we reject the Torah, we're rejecting God. We're rejecting who he is in us. Well, the scripture says that even though I was a husband to you. So yep. the Torah, and the way I've always understood it, it is the marriage contract. It is. It's the ketuba. Cassandra. I'm going cross. Oh. I'm so dizzy. There's like three Cassandras. There's like two Dales. There's like, whoo. Oh, well, I was just say, um, because it just kind of came to me. It almost feels like if we're going to oversimplify the entire thing, um, it almost feels like Yahweh was like, I'm not going to divorce you, but I'm going to renew my vows with you, but I'm setting boundaries so that you know that you can't go past these boundaries. Like I'm setting the expectations for you. And basically he's like, I'm trying to make it so hard for you to fail. Stop messing up. Dodo, but you know, it's like, knock it off. I'm like, literally you can't fail. You can't fail. He's like, I gave you my spirit. Now you can't fail. And whoa. Well, We'll leave it to us. We still find a way to fail, right? Miss Eternity. Oh, hi, sweet. Your mute son. There you go. Hi, hi sugar. How are you? I'm tired. <laughs> Me too. So I know this isn't relevant to anything, but lately, and I mean lately, I charge twenty dollars for irrelevancy. That's I'm teasing. Haha, <laughs> joke. Like button. five minutes ago, I remembered the dream I had a day ago. Now, it was a very strong urge. I even had to draw it. It kind of looked like this, like a circle. No, it was like three circles with a ring around it, and it had caverns and caves and. There was a giant and three bot, you know, like army men that go in boxes. Mm -hmm. There was like three of them and they were all wearing blue and everyone outside of the circle was like, I, I don't know, being demolished or was like in really unsafe homes. Mm -hmm. But I was living inside of the circle and there was like a big party in the middle of the circle but on the ring with like the caverns and caves and 
pyramids and stuff like that. There was like a whole bunch of bones. Interesting. That is interesting. We'll have to talk about when I when my brain's not completely shutting down. I'll have to like pray about it with you. That's yeah. awesome. All right. Okay. okay, I'm done. Stick a toothpick Me in. I'm done. So love you all. I will not see you tomorrow unless something happens with our fellowship and we don't go with Mountain. Then if I have time in the afternoon i'll just hop on live at some point oh my gosh i love you all i pray you get sleep i'm gonna like let myself sleep forever <laughs> which will be like till five o'clock that's me sleeping in but five o'clock is gonna feel stinking good i love you all have a blessed night feel free to message i'm not gonna see it tonight unless something random happens but i love you all thankful for you all Shibash. oh and don't think i don't like you if i don't contact you i literally didn't check any of my messages for two days because i had zero time i was like literally was in the field by 4 12 this morning got up at 3 30 i don't even check my phone because then i can't get out there and get my stuff done so i just don't look so i don't get drawn in by a thousand messages i love you all okay love you love you too bye 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 b